What is up everybody? It is Aug here back with another video and today we are going to be taking a look into Mara without doing any pauses. Now I've been getting a lot of requests for a video like this basically running through the entire instance doing my standard guide and everything like that but without taking any breaks that way people can just hit play and then watch the video as they're doing the runs themselves and hopefully just kind of follow along and hopefully that will help them learn quicker so i'm going to be going over some special tips and tricks for how to answer some of the questions i've been getting recently such as why mobs reset how to make them not reset certain kind of tactics you can use and i'm also going to be talking the entire way through about what i am thinking as we go so i hope you guys enjoy this video if you guys do like this method Method where I let it run all the way through and don't take any pauses so you guys can walk through the video with me please let me know in the comments down below and let me know if you guys would like to see a video like that for SM as well so let's jump into it okay so to get started you want to make sure that you have ice barrier up you rank one frostbolt this first mob I'm going to reapply ice barrier real quick so you rank one frostbolt this first mob to get the pool going and then you run over and you wand this group over here. You can also use rank one frostbolt if you want to, but basically just use whatever you can to aggro them. I don't blink here because I need blink for later to make sure that I stay ahead of the mobs. So I come up here, I cone a cold on these mobs right here with a rank one. Run up this ramp right here. Jump Nova. Sometimes the mobs from the right will be close enough where they also get nova but if not, it is perfectly fine. But you do want to make sure that as soon as you Nova, you blink. Now you want to make sure that blink is on cooldown and you start refreshing the cooldown because you're going to need it in a second to make sure that you avoid some mobs. So here we run through here, we counter spell that group right there, and then we blink through the right side there. And now you can see that we didn't really take any damage. Now what you just saw there was it what I call a jump turn code of cold. And so there's a really neat trick that you could use for Kona cold to basically make it so that you're constantly running forward, but also getting off Kona cold. So what you do is you turn around your camera like this, jump, and with pressing the two mouse buttons, you jump, turn around, and then turn right back while casting Kona Cold as you're turned around. You don't end up losing much time, if any, on your forward progress, but at the same time, you get off Kona Cold. So one more time, I'll turn around the camera, jump, turn, Kona Cold with rank one, and then keep on running forward. So in order to be able to do that, you need to turn off a certain setting. And so that setting is called Smart Following Style. If you change this to Always or to some other setting, Basically, what will happen is when you turn around your camera, it's automatically going to turn back for you, no matter what you want it to do. So you have to turn that off first. But as long as you turn that off, you could do that jump turn kind of cold, and it really is helpful for any clears. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the ads right there at the end. I like to Nova them to try to get them to group up a little bit and run forward. That way that they're grouped for the future so they don't reset. But also then they are good to go so I can make sure that... Um, I have plenty of distance ahead of them. Now you're going to keep on running through here. If you are a mage, you need to pop a Winterfall Firewater or an Elixir of the Giant Growth. Savvy at Delights and Noggin Foggers do not work as far as changing your character model because they don't actually change the size of your character model. But Winterfall Firewater or Elixir of Giant Growth will work. So we come up this side here and we aggro all these mobs and then blink through. Now the best way that I've found to aggro them is by using Rank 1 Arcane Explosions and a counter spell on the last mob and a fire blast on the first mob you jump up here the important thing here is you want to make sure that you rank one nova that shambler right there else he could do some serious damage to you as you're walking up the path you rank one arcane explosion in the corner group and blink through the next group because they're going to get pulled by the mobs automatically now you're going to want to pull this group to the left and the group to the right now sometimes he's going to be a little bit too far so just make sure you step over if necessary to make sure that you pull him now what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to run all the way to the wall and then start heading up the side the reason you want to do that is you're going to start making these mobs kind of work in a diagonal to get to you and so they're actually automatically stacking on their own without you making any kind of adjustments so we're going to talk more about this later but this really helps you later on to make sure that you're keeping the slimes with the group and every other mob as well so you rank one arcane explosion that last mob and then jump off here here's another spot where you want to make sure that you stop moving if you go too far, there's a possibility you're going to be too far ahead of these slimes and other things like that, and they're going to reset. So you want to stop right there. Once they get to about the midway point, you start running up this ramp. You're going to rank one Frostbolt, this Deep Root Tangler, to make sure, Deep Rot Tangler, sorry, to make sure that you pull him because you're going to want to get every single mob of the instance, and that will allow us to get through there. Come around the side and go into the side room right here where there's some extra packs. 
There's going to occasionally be a Shadow Soccer here in Stealth. When you see him, don't worry about him. You can aggro him. It's not a big deal. If you happen to get hamstrung by him, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to block and cancel or block immediately. Now we're going to run around this perimeter because what's going to happen is that the groups are going to automatically stack themselves up a little bit. Don't worry too much if the group gets too close. You could jump turn Kona Cold. Typically, they won't get close enough where you even need to do that, though. There's that Shadow Stalker right there. You jump off, and now the groups are actually pretty well stacked already. But we're going to go for that rank 1 Blizz. Here's another place where a lot of people lose the slimes, because they don't let the rank 1 Blizz go all the way through its cast. If you don't let it go all the way through its cast and then run a little bit before blinking, there's a chance you're going to get too far ahead of the slimes. So make sure you let the rank 1 Blizz go all the way through, run a little bit while you're still getting hit by the poison darts. If anything, you're just getting back mana, and then start to blink, and then start to run to the next spot. Once Corruption and the Poison Sprite debuff falls off, you're going to rebuff your buffs, so Mana, Shield, and Ice Barrier, and then you're going to come over this middle part right here and blink to the other side. Once you're up here, you rank 1 Blizzard that group as soon as the other mobs are coming through the bottom, and then you start rank 1 Blizzarding all the mobs together. Now, reason that you want to make sure that you don't get too close to the mid middle here is that they can actually hit you from below. So if you get too close to the middle and you don't blink, there's a potential that you're just going to get one shot from the group below. I counterspell this group in the corner, so that's Seder, who's chilling in the corner. Bring him over to the other mobs, and then rank one Nova all of them. That way they're stacked right there, and it allows the other mobs a little bit of a chance to catch up. Now you come up to this side here. You're going to rank one Blizz right on this corner here. The best place to do it is on the corner, because they have to run through the side and then down, so they're actually stuck in your Blizzard for longer. Once blizzards run out, or if the mobs get too close to you, you jump off and you start running down here on the bottom. So now what you want to make sure that you do is keep up Dampen Magic and keep on running around the side. The reason why you want to have as many mobs slowed as possible is you want time to get through this side part, aggro these mobs, and then get back ahead of those other mobs before they start hitting you. So you're going to rank one Frostbolt the Far Mob, rank one Arcadian Explosion to pull the two Deep Rots in the middle, and then counterspell the last one. Blink ahead to this group on the right, Nova them, and then continue up this path. This Stomper is probably going to be too close to you, which is perfectly fine. When he gets really close, just rank one Kona Coldum and get up to this top part, and now rank one Blizzard right here. What's going to end up happening is you're going to slow the mobs on the left side, and you're also going to slow the mobs on the right side. Once they get close, just start moving away, aggro the right group. What you've done there is you've actually given yourself enough time for Counterspell to get all the way up to Counterspell this group to pull them, so you don't have to wand them. But if you do need to move earlier and you need to wand this group, that's perfectly fine too. Just make sure you can do it with a safe distance or might, might be better to run up and fire blast them just so you keep the mobs constantly moving. Run along this part here and you just want to stay a little bit ahead of the mobs. You don't need to be terribly ahead of them, but you definitely want to get a little bit of distance because you want to be able to get a good blizzard off on the next part. You also don't want to get too far away though, where you're going to have them reset. I'm going to Nova that Shadow Soccer right there just because I want to make sure that I pull him. Because otherwise he might not pull. He probably will, but just to be better, just to be safe. You're going to run up this ramp as quickly as possible. Jump up to this part and then Blizzard here right on the corner. Again, by Blizzarding on the corner, they have to go down the ramp and then to the right. So they're actually running through the Blizzard extra long. What that allows for is it allows for them to make sure that they get the slow debuff on them. Otherwise, they might not get slowed. And it also allows you more time to get more mobs in the blizzard before you need to start running. Come over up to the top here. Rank 1 Arcane Explosion to pull those mobs in the middle there. There's always going to be two mobs in stealth. Pull this last mob. Blink ahead. And then you just kind of ride out until the end. Let all the mobs start running over towards you. And then you jump off right here. Now if you're low on health, you can bandage. Uh, if you haven't evocated yet, you can evocate. But make sure that you switch over to Mage Armor because that gives you an extra good bit of resistance that we can use later on, and it allows you to regen some mana, but you shouldn't have any mana issues. Now you're going to blizzard the front mobs. Your goal here is just to make sure that the back mobs catch up to the front mobs. So you don't necessarily need to blizzard everybody, but you just at least need to blizzard the front mobs. If some mobs get through like that, that's perfectly okay. Just counterspell that tangler in the corner. He's going to try to entangle roots you anyway, so he's going to get stuck behind right there. And then rank one Nova the mobs that are close to you. They're going to have plenty of time to get out of rank 1 Nova and catch up to you with the mobs in the back anyways, so you're not going to lose any mobs. But now you want to do this roundabout strat here again. We're going to get these mobs even more clumped up. Reason being, by doing this, these mobs are coming this way. 
these mobs are coming this way and they are stacking up automatically. Now you just run off this ledge and what you're going to notice is that they are so stacked up at this point that you don't even need to rank one blizzard on this route anymore because they're already stacked up enough where they're pretty much in one blizzard already. You come around this side, run up the path here, and you'll have plenty of time to get to your position. Rebuff your shields when you do not have any debuffs, just as before, and get ready to get to the final spot to be able to AoE them down. You'll notice that they're nowhere even close, so you don't even need to blink over this middle spot if you want to regen some extra mana. However, if they are closer and you think you could possibly get hit, play it safe and just blink over the middle. Once you get to the spot, you want to be standing pretty much right behind this peg right there. When they're about one second away from their target destination, you want to start your blizzard right on the corner there, because most of them are going to get hit. If there are a couple that break through, you basically just want to make them your new focus target. So what you do is you put the blizzard with them right in the middle of the blizzard. That way the mobs that are in the back get caught up, but the mob in the front always stays slowed. Once they get up to the top here, what we're going to do is we are going to jump off here. And now what I like to do is I like to do two blizzards while they run down and one blizzard while they're up top. I slightly messed up here because I didn't run to the left to get the poison sprites, so that is completely on me. But we are still good to go to get up here. We're going to jump up to the top and start blizzarding again. Now reason being that you want to move a little bit to the left beforehand is that you want to make sure that these sprites actually come up to the middle. Because now you can kill the sprites in the middle while you're killing all the other mobs at the same time. Jump off here. And now you can cast a blizzard, as you see, on all these sprites, and they're all dying. You have plenty of mana, and all the mobs are going to go down. It's been about 11 minutes. A little bit of a slower run, I would say. But now we are good to go for the loot. So I got 175 kills. Probably includes a couple critters, but it's about 170 kills for this path. What I'm going to show you guys now is something called Loot Appraiser. So this is a fun little add-on you can get. But basically what you could do is you can go into Interface Options, Loot Appraiser, and you can set this quality filter to Pour, which means it's going to keep track of every single item, and then you set a gold loot threshold. So I set mine to gold and to three gold, so that anything above three gold in worth, I get a loot alert for it. And now what you do is you start looting, and you're going to notice it's going to keep track of everything that you're looting and your total estimated amount that you're earning per run. So it's really cool to be able to keep track of your gold, Obviously, when you have multiple people in the group, it's not going to be as much per se, just because you're not going to be getting as much currency, you're not going to be getting as many items kind of deal. But it's really cool, especially when solo, to be able to see just how much money you're getting in each individual run. Now, there's a ton of mobs stacked up here in the middle. This is going to take quite a long time. But what you can see right there is we just got JD Pollets, which were 3 gold and 91 silver. And so that boosted the looted item value all the way up to 4 gold and 30 silver right off the bat there. We're going to be hoping for an epic. So we could potentially... Oh, there's another weapon right there. So weapons are great, obviously, because you can vendor them for a lot. But we're going to... Oh, there's another 4 gold right there. Monk Staff, another weapon. I typically get between 4 and 8 greens per each run, I would say. While we do this, let's go over my talents a little bit. We'll move this over to the right here. So there's a couple different talent builds you can use. This is my standard talent build that I use for SM and everything like that. Uh, so what I do is I basically don't have to respec. So I like running this talent build. But there is a slightly better probably build if you're having some trouble living through the sprites and they're getting through your shield and everything like that. And that is to go for Magic Attunement. So basically what this does is it increases the effect of your Amplify Magic and Dampen Magic by 25%. Two points, 50%. You'll notice here that I suffer six, 36 shadow damage from corruption, but the poison belt right here, 34 nature damage. So if I'm reducing the damage by even more, I'm pretty much not getting hit at all by these nature spells throughout the entire run, and you'll be able to keep up shield very easily. Then I like getting Arcane Resilience because it gives me an extra 50% of the armor. When you're pulling this many mobs, got these many mobs, you're going to get hit at some point. So it helps to have that extra little bit of armor that way you can make sure that you aren't just getting gibbed randomly like that. We're getting really lucky with the weapons. So we did get, I think, four greens so far, which is pretty much in line between four and eight with what we're expecting. But we did get a lot of, of weapons. So there's another green right there. And the weapons are selling for a lot, so they are really helping us with our overall money. Now you're going to notice that Overlinked Coif didn't come through on 
the price alert because the vendor sale price is 26 silver, but it came up at zero copper. But that's all right. It helps average out if things are overpriced or something like that. Now you're going to notice that my inventory went all the way to full. This is going to happen. I recommend an add-on called Dejunk, where you can actually specify that you don't want to keep gelatinous glue, glue, sorry, goo, or um, maybe some low-cost vendor items like crochet bracers, and you can automatically delete them. So I highly recommend the add-on Dejunk. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live, and also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.